Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, nighttime, wherever you are while you're watching this. Um, I hope that the beginning of 2022 is treating you gorgeously and you are being nourished by the cycle season we are in. I always um, notice this huge resurgence, I think all of us do, of like being better, doing things totally differently, et cetera, et cetera, um, for the new year, right? The new calendar year. It's like this big thing that we are like, I don't like this habit and that habit that I've gotten myself into this year and I want to completely change my life. Um, and I love that energy. However, working with herbs and with people with herbs and lifestyles and habits and shifting and all the things, I have seen a lot of people go 100 miles an hour towards a massive change only to two weeks later forget and be a human being and that's normal and and then they're disappointed and they're mad at themselves and what happens in that context of our minds our souls then we beat out beat ourselves up we completely fall back to the old self and being in that energy and we have the capacity as a mindful being here to embody something different, right? To implement new habits, even though at the same time, by the time we're 35, pretty much everything we do is done via habit, by routine. Um, our bodies do it without our minds even realizing we're doing it. Like when you, you know, I don't, when you drive to work, you know, on your commute and like, all of a sudden you're at work and you're like, was I even aware that I was driving to work? <laughs> it's, it's that kind of energy. It's that kind of um, ha habitual movement that, that we just sink back into because it, it's to get out of that, it takes a lot of mindful action and it takes a lot of discipline to throughout your day remember you know, you have to keep on reminding yourself keep on reminding yourself keep on reminding yourself that this is something new that we're doing body this is something new that we want to experience body or mind or what have you um so something that i love is like creating a new habit or really trying to dismantle old patterns that are not nourishing to the mind or the body. Um, now, I take my herbs all the time because I've been doing it for 16 years and it's almost, um, it's, a, it's out of body, I guess, out of mind uh, for me because that's a part of my, my, my ritual, my habit, my routine. So, a lot of people go into, oh, you know, you notice in the stores right now, all the supplements are on sale. <laughs> all of everything's being promoted. All of the, the health, you know, I see all these even more memes on my, on my Instagram or um, all these things like lose weight in 10 days and this is how you do that. You just have to do this one thing and you lose weight in 10 days and you lose 10 pounds in 10 days and it's going to be amazing and it's going to completely change your life and you don't have to think about it. Well, in reality, we have to think about it <laughs> for it to become something new and something fresh and something different and a new way of existing. We have to think about it. If we're not thinking about it, we're not going to shift that habit. Um, that's just kind of how it, how it works. Um, so something that over the holidays, I think a lot of us get into the habit of like my family, we have always, my grandma like baked a storm up for the entire month of December, right? I, things and, um, so in our family we bake and I think a lot of families bake, um, 
<clears throat> and then we have a lot of like English baked goods that are very different um, because my grandma was first generation Canadian from England. Um, so she had a lot of that very much intact with her upbringing. And then we got to have that because my sister and I, my mom, we lived with my grandparents for my entire childhood until I was 13 or 14, something like this. Anyway, so I still bake and I love it. I love breaking out all the Christmas like recipes and all the memories that come flooding back and like, oh my gosh, we've been doing this for a really long time. It's a habit. It's, it's a cyclical seasonal celebrational habit for me and my family. However, <laughs> by January, after three weeks, let's say three weeks of like consistent baking, I really want to continue eating baked goods, but I also really want to be healthy and have my blood sugar under control. And I really want to have this vitality throughout my life. Um, that's why I take herbs all the time. That's why herbs are my life. It's why I grow my own food. It's why I live the way I live. It's why I talk about plants all the time is because it connects me to nature, it connects to the ceremonial cyclical living of nature, but really it's keeping me and my insides at a youthful vitality that I want to experiment on myself, bringing through this life, right? So eating, <laughs> my kitty, eating baked goods um, continuously is, is, I know in my mind, in my body, that that is not something I want to continue to do because it will eventually degrade my my youthful vitality that I wish to bring through my life as, as long as I can and be an experiment of this herbal living, this delicious cookie or this bar that is not a protein bar, <laughs> but, or this pudding or whatever it may be. What happens is we begin, that's what we, our bacteria in our gut our brain, the chemicals in our brains, they, they, they get in the root, that routine also, and it becomes a habit. It becomes the way we're now doing things. It becomes the lifestyle. It becomes, do you see what I mean? Like it, we develop it very quickly. We can very quickly break habits. We can very quickly create new habits. Um, and this is why it takes so much diligence to um, to break, to shift, to bring about newness in this human life, especially as we go through life. Like 35, Dr. Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about this all the time. 35 years old is when everything is a habit. And after the five, it, it becomes like that much more difficult and that much more of a, a, a diligent chore to shift your habits. So, the time it takes to develop a new habit or to shift our entire lifestyle like Christmas, holiday baking, Yuletide baking, that's huge for me. I freaking love baked goods, especially oh, homemade ones. like legit homemade awesomeness, right? When we spend a chunk of time consuming these things and we begin to train our microbiome, we begin to train our brains, we begin to train the chemical responses that we have with chemicals, with training our microbiomes, with going back to what we did before. And that is digestive bitters. And what I'm taking now to work on these cravings, right, um, is the Mahonia because it is cooling, grounding to the digestive system where baked goods tend to increase heat and inflammation in our, in our guts and in our, in our bodies. And so I am combating that 
the heat with the Mahonia Mountain Bitters. So Mahonia Mountain Bitters is mainly Oregon grape, rhizome, and leaf. I don't harvest the root because the plant gets harmed very easily when you harvest the root of Oregon grape. Um, this has dandelion root and leaf in it and pine. Pine, little baby pine needles when they are growing in the spring. So, and that's all. It's an apple cider vinegar extract with a tiny bit of alcohol just for shelf stability purposes um, so that the apple cider vinegar is not growing a mother because that gets a little awkward in a um, dropper bottle. But the Mahonia Mountain Bitters is all about cooling and grounding a hot and overactive constitution. So someone who has a lot of heat bubbling in their stomach, a lot of heat in their entire circulatory system because of what they're eating, generally speaking, that is usually where it comes from. Someone who's red in the face, rosacea, or just red, um, someone who has really high blood pressure, uh, the person I'm describing, their liver is usually angry and holding a lot of anger. They can manifest as an angry person as well, someone who's really hot, someone who's really combative, someone who's really like in your face. Long term is uh, diabetes. It leads to hypertension. It leads to acid reflux and heartburn and esophageal breakdown because you're having stomach acid come up. So. There's a lot of things that over a lifetime that this kind of a constitution leads to manifesting. And Mahonia Mountain Bitters, my obsession, to cool that kind of a constitution down, to simmer it down, to give it some roots, to ground into the earth and be cool. The main ingredient in Oregon grape that is amazingly active for stuff like this is berberine. Berberine, you can get it in a capsule, by itself do not do that you guys like a whole nother thing i think i've talked about it in other videos these synthetic capsulated isolated compounds of plants it's the same thing as taking a pharmaceutical you are not getting the holistic spectrum of a plant you're not getting the entire constitution of a plant which is really what is keeping us well the organ grape and the berberine so berberine is highly anti-inflammatory it is amazing for arthritis. It's amazing for all these hot inflammatory conditions. But again, because Oregon grape is a digestive bitter, focuses on the digestive system, when you break open the rhizome even, it is this chartreuse color. It's gorgeous. This color matches the color of our bile. These are the little cues and keys and little bits and pieces that nature offers us to be like, hello, this is what I am for, work with me here. So <clears throat> when we work with the organ grape in this way, we are able to work with our bile. Bile is what breaks down fats and proteins, usually with a hot digestive system, someone who has a lot of acid manifesting, we're not breaking down fats and proteins. They're sitting in our stomach. The duodenums are not closing on either end of our stomach. We have little um, muscle groups that are called duodenums and they're supposed to open and shut, right? To like let food into the stomach and let food out of the stomach into the small intestine. When we have food sitting in our stomach because it's not being digested and usually it's fats and proteins because they're harder to digest, it sits in the stomach, it putrefies it gets all nasty with stomach acids and bile is trying, but I'm not doing a great job because I'm not concentrated, all the things, the duodenum stays open, right? And then we have all this mixture. We have food and we have acid and we have bile and we have enzymes and we have all these things that are supposed to be stored in our stomach that are supposed to be broken down inside of our stomach. And then with that duodenum not shutting, when you have a hot, overactive, acidic, hyper digestive system because of the foods that you eat and because of the food you don't eat, the duodenum stays open. And then when you lay down, what happens? All, to go to bed, all of that partially digested food, stomach acids, enzymes, bile, come up your esophagus. This is heartburn. This is indigestion. This is acid reflux. This is the mechanism of all of those things. This is why Tums are effective because it, it 
calms it down, it cools it down. It's cooling it down via pharmaceutical mindset. You're still eating all these things. You're not shifting lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. So that's acid reflux. And what then happens is we're breaking down our esophagus lining. We're causing cancer. We're long, long term, right? Long term. Um, but so Mahonia Mountain Bitters, cooling and grounding. The color of berberine matching that of bile. Oregon grape is so excellent, so good at strengthening the, the liver to break down and digest and detox our system while also hanging out with the gallbladder. Oregon grape is amazing at strengthening the concentration of our bile that then is able to efficiently break down fats and proteins so we are digesting our food correctly. There's a whole bunch of other mechanisms within that heartburn spiel that have to do with um, inflammation in the gut, in the stomach, etc. But we're going to try and keep this to the organ grape, shifting habits, etc. Help to concentrate that bile, strengthen the liver, balance the acid out in our stomach. But that's a chemical response of taking plant chemicals. My favorite part and my little hack here for life, digestive bitters, when we take them directly by mouth, okay? We want to put it directly in our mouth, like dropper. We wanna taste it right to our mouth. What this does, we're talking to our digestive system where it counts very much. We have a nerve called the vagus nerve that sits, that's the largest bundle of nerves, sits at the base of our brain, talks to our gut. With the vagus nerve begins in the mouth with a collection of taste bud receptors called T2R receptors. They are directly connected to bitter plant chemicals. And so when we've been eating junk for a month, creating bad habits, starting to create bad habits and we want to say hello January hello back to my usual habits yes I would like to do that but I am craving those cookies I am craving chocolate I am having the hardest time staying away from it I'm craving all of the heavy foods that are so satisfying to our brain right so satisfying to being in the winter time like darkness but I want to get back to my regular routine. When you can mindfully, conscientiously, go to your digestive bitters when you're having that craving. Go to your digestive bitters. Take a couple droppers full. My cat is so clingy right now. Um, what begins to happen here? We begin to say, Remember, that was just a phase. That was just a wintertime thing. Let's get back to the balanced state we are usually in. Digestive bitters do that. They do so many other magical things, but if this is the one place that you implement digestive bitters into your life, you're gonna watch your entire life change because you're shifting your brain chemistry, you're shifting the cravings of the microbiome in your gut, all the bacterium, all the yeast in your gut, you're retraining them. We're going from, here's all this sweet stuff, we can just as easily talk to our vagus nerve, talk to our digestive system with digestive bitters, and shift back. So, it, it, it does take the mindful action, it does take the diligence, it does take the bitter face, but again, it will shift your entire microbiome, your entire gut, and it will ground it again and you will get back into normal and you will not be beating yourself up by the end of January for completely disregarding and neglecting all of your New Year's resolutions and goals. So for food, 
for shifting lifestyle, for nourishing yourself, digestive bitters all the time. I have three digestive bitters that I make, um, four if you count Angelica as a single extract, um, and they're all linked below. You can check out my remedies, go to my online apothecary. All of my remedies are made in small batches. I hand harvest, I grow all the herbs, I use most all the plant material fresh, I don't outsource off the farm. Um, all of my plant material comes from the farm or surrounding wild areas that I forage in. Thank you so much for being here. If you made it this far, please definitely hit the like and subscribe button. Um, follow me on Instagram and get on my email list because I talk about all this stuff um, on my blog. I talk about all this stuff in my emails and I'm super excited to be here with you. So do all the things, follow me everywhere if you feel so inclined and share this video with a friend if you feel called to do so. And I thank you so very much. I'm gonna sign off for now, sending you lots of love and abundance and magic for your new year.